Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tanika Harris. I am the Director of Communication and Community Relations for the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh. We are glad that you are able to join us today for our regular board meeting, which is for today, June 8th, 2023. Uh, Chairman Chintalapoli, all of your board members are here. You do have a quorum, and I'm asking for a special permission right now to begin the meeting a little differently than we've done others um, by allowing our executive director, uh, Ms. Sushila Namani Stenger, to uh, present a few words. Thank you, Director. Uh, director Namani Stenger, I know we wanted to take a moment to honor uh, one of our um, colleagues and, and friends, so I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Chairman Trinchalopoli. My name is Sushila Nimani Stanger. I'm the Executive Director of the URA. As many of you know, sadly, our colleague passed away suddenly on Sunday, May 28th. Joseph Ballesteri Jr., affectionately known as Joey, was a beloved husband and father to three wonderful children. He was a cherished coworker. Joey's infectious smile, coupled with his signature hat, illuminated the URA. Joey was dedicated to his work. He supervised lead abatement in homes throughout our region. He was very proud of his work, and his work directly improved the quality of life and health for hundreds of homeowners and their children. Joey often expressed his enjoyment working with his QCNI inspection team and voiced deep gratitude to his supervisor, Corey. He was an important part of the URA and will be deeply missed. His tragic passing reminds us how precious life is and the importance of showing love and operating in kindness. Chairman and board members, thank you for giving us this time to honor Joey and his family. We now ask for a moment of silence as we honor the life and legacy of Joey Ballesteri Jr. Thank you, Chairman Chintalopoli, for allowing us the time to be able to create this space to honor Joey. We now pass the meeting back over to you. Thank you, Director. Um, so moving into uh, our normal agenda, um, first item um, will be approval of the May 11th, 2023 URA board meeting minutes. Any questions, uh, comments from the board? Motion to approve. I, I would just like to comment for a moment. Um, I will second with the note that I did abstain from the vote on Bedford Dwellings, phase one. So Thank that you. Representative Morano, it, it just to just to clarify, is that a motion then to amend the minutes to reflect your abstention? Yes. Okay. Do we have a, a second for that motion? Second. Okay. Um, then do we have a motion to um, approve the meeting minutes as amended. So moved. Second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? The motion carries. Um, please note that the board met an executive session on June 2nd. Uh, the purpose for this was uh, a briefing for today's meeting and it was for informational purposes only. Um, moving on, we'll go into public comment. Um, Daniel Grantham, I'll turn the floor over to you. 
Thank you. Um, our first registered public comment comes from Pastor Love. Uh, please give me a moment to find you in the meeting room. Okay. Pastor uh, Love, you have three minutes to give your public comment. Uh, once you start speaking, I will give you about a 30 second heads up when your time is about to expire. So you have the floor. Mr. Love hasn't come off of mute yet, though he is in the room. Hello? Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. You have the floor. All right. Thank you. I'm Pastor Love. I'm the pastor of Free Temple Deliverance Church in Hazelwood. I'm also the uh, vice president and co chair of the um, Great Hazel Commission against Racial and Ethnic Disparities. And I work uh, in cooperation with Poor Law, a nonprofit organization in Hazelwood. And we're I'm calling in to encourage um, uh, the board and everyone to support um, our efforts in the community to Avenue of Hope uh, and uh, to say that uh, we greatly appreciate the work that you're doing. It's like more or less a graduatorial thing. We like to see the work that you're doing. You're doing good work and we want to make sure that Hazelwood is beneficial and the residents of Hazelwood are beneficial. That's what I call for. Thank you, Pastor. This registered public comment is from Sandra Cole McKamey. Uh, give me just a moment to see if I can find you in the meeting room. Found you. Hello. Hi. You have three minutes. Once you begin starting, I'll give you about a 30 second heads up when your time is about to expire. You have the floor. Yes, I, I won't need I won't need all that time. I was I was um seconding with Pastor Love said, um, just have an opportunity to be able to be in a pool of money and the effects that we will have on the residents and the people in our community. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, our next and final registered public comment uh, is Megan Hammond. Uh, I've located her in the room. Uh, Megan, you have the floor and uh, I'll get your three minute time starts uh, when you begin speaking and I'll give you a 30 second heads up. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Megan Hammond. I'm the Executive Director of the Fair Housing Partnership of Greater Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm commenting on two agenda items today. Uh, one, uh, I would like to discuss the announcement that the Homeowner Assistance Program uh, is opening its applications at the end of June. Uh, as you know, the HAP program receives an overwhelming amount of applications compared to the limited resources it has to allocate. And the HAP is also Pittsburgh city-based version of Pennsylvania's now Whole Homes Repair Program. Uh, in Allegheny County, Whole Homes Repair is applying an equity lens to its own allocation of limited resources by using a lottery selection me method uh, instead of the first come first serve policy of how the applications are accepted. So an application accepted on the first and last day of the application period has the same capacity of being chosen for receiving the funding. Uh, this is an equity matter, uh, particularly as it applies to racial equity in uh, making sure that uh, all applicants have a fair shot at receiving access to the program. And I ask that the URA considers that in the next round of applications for HAP, that it operates via a lottery selection method as well. Uh, additionally, uh, I would like to comment on the affordable housing bond, and I have two points. Uh, one, I ask that the $42 million affordable housing bond uh, comes with a robust public process of community input in how the money is allocated. Uh, we know that there is much greater need than the money that we have. And in Pittsburgh, the privatization of our affordable housing market 
has resulted in development that follows the path of least resistance. As a result, our privately funded, our privately developed affordable housing is overwhelmingly senior housing, which while needed, is happening at the expense of almost any new family size units, which are three bedrooms or more. So the status quo of our affordable housing development will arguably uh, worsen our racial segregation uh, without a public process in uh, discussing the $42 million allocation. Uh, two, I understand that the current $2.5 million affordable housing line item in the budget is now for the bond debt service. Uh, I ask that there's a consideration that the Housing Opportunity Fund $10 million will increase by another $2.5 million for a total of $12.5 million for its upcoming 2024 allocation, as there was some consideration of this $2.5 million for the debt service would have potentially been used for the Housing Opportunity Fund. I say this simply because the HOF will be doing its 2024 allocations in the coming months, and the funding will be allocated on a known timeline with the public process where the programs will move forward when time is of the uh, essence and, you have about and inflation is limited to the impact of the $10 million more so than ever. Uh, and so I ask for the consideration that the $10 million has an additional $2.5 million for 2024. I thank you all for your time uh, and have a good day. Thank you. Are there any other registered commenters, Dan? Uh, there's not. That completes our public comment. Thank you. Um, moving into our announcements portion of the agenda, uh, first will be the RFQ for own, BG, own PGH, pardon me, banking partners. Joining us for this will be uh, Rand Dis Driscoll. Hi, everyone. My name is Ray Ann Driscoll. I'm the OWN PGH coordinator. Uh, for, for those of you who may not be familiar, OWN PGH is the American Rescue Plan funded first time home buyer program that assists borrowers with the purchase of their first, first home by providing them with up to $90,000 in the form of grants and forgivable loans. Administering the program relies heavily on coordination with our partners in the banking community who serve as the front door for the program. The program launched earlier this year, utilizing Dollar Bank, SSB, and First Commonwealth Bank, who have all been exceptional in helping us get our processes in place. And I'm here today to announce that we will be posting on the URA website a request for qualifications uh, for additional mortgage lending service providers. It'll be posted on June 21st and will remain open until July 31st. Some things that we'll be looking for for potential lenders are their track record and working with low to moderate income populations, as well as historically disadvantaged groups. They will also need to be able to adhere to the processes and procedures of the own PGH program. And the goal here is to add lenders so that we can keep growing and expanding our reach. So again, the RFQ will be available starting June 21st and the proposal due date is July 31st at 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Rayan. Um, any questions, comments from the board? It's exciting to see that we're looking to grow our, our lender base. Um, you know, let, let us know how, how things are looking and, and the interest as it comes along, if there's anything we can do uh, to help, you know, outreach or whatever the case may be. Um, thank you. Um, our next Senate. Yeah. Our next announcement um, is an RFP for the Greater Hill District Neighborhood Reinvestment Fund Administrators. Uh, Julia McMahon will be joining us for this. And I'm a project manager in the Development Services Unit. Um, the Greater Hill District Neighborhood Reinvestment Fund Advisory Board voted to release an RFP for two roles. The first is a resource navigator and administrator. The second is a quality control inspector. Uh, the RFP is anticipated to be released later this month. Thanks. Julia, could you repeat that a little bit louder? I had a very hard time hearing you. Sure. Is that a better volume? A little bit louder if possible. The Greater Hill District Neighborhood Reinvestment Fund Advisory Board voted to release an RFP uh, 
to work for, with the fund for two roles. The first role is a resource navigator and administrator. And the second role is a quality control con, uh, construction inspector. And the RFP is anticipated to be released later this month. Better? Perfect, thank you so much. Thank you, Julia. Um, any questions or comments from the board? Just a quick comment. Um, I really just want to take a moment to thank Julia. I got to think of everyone. Hannah, I know David, James. I think Gordon has also participated. I just want to take a moment to really thank them for the work they've done working with the Greater Hill District um, Reinvestment Advisory Board. Um, they often have to deal with a lot. So I just wanted to publicly thank them for all that they do and helping us get to where we are. Here, here on that. <laughs> um, it's exciting to see it move forward. I know it, it gets us one step closer to, to you know, the, the rest of the hill being able to access the monies and the, the fund. Um, so um, thank you. Yeah, I would, I would echo the councilman's comments and, and thank you all for your work on this. Um, and onward and upward. So uh, our next RFP is related to ta or announcements related to an RFP on tax diversion programs, uh, tax collector and trustee services. Uh, joining us for this one's going to be James Reed. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, members of the Board of Directors, the general public and URA staff. My name is James Reed, and I'm the Senior Manager of Development Finance for the URA's Development Services Unit. Uh, I'm here today to announce that this month, the URA will release a request for proposal from interested qualified companies to provide tax collection and trustee services for the URA's tax diversion portfolio, which consists of tax increment financing districts, transit revitalization investment districts, and parking tax diversions. Interested and qualified companies are encouraged to respond to the RFP if they are able to provide one or both of the previously mentioned services. Um, the RFP will be accessible through the URA's bidding platform, IronWave, will be listed on the UR's, URA's website and will be pushed through social media as well. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments for the board? Our next announcement is related to the homeowner assistance program uh, with applications opening on June 26th. Uh, joining us for this will be Melinda Ward. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, looks like my video. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, my name is Melinda Ward, Consumer Lending Program Coordinator in the URA's Housing Department. Thank you all for being here with us this afternoon. Um, so I am thrilled on behalf of the entire Housing Department to uh, announce that we are reopening the Homeowner Assistance Program, otherwise known as the HAP Program, um, application period. So HAP, the Homeowner Assistance Program, will reopen applications at the end of this month from June 26th through August 4th, 2023. Um, very important to note, applications will not be accepted outside of this time frame. So, you know, we, we love people that are enthused about this. We wanna serve Pittsburgh residents far and wide, but please um, wait until June 26th. Folks working with constituents, um, homeowners throughout the city, um, please, you know, be mindful of the timeline. And residents can access the application by visiting the URA's website um, and also request an application or um, you know, have further inquiries responded to by emailing hoff at ura.org. So um, the homeowner assistance program provides up to $35,000 to homeowners throughout Pittsburgh to assist them in acquiring those critical home repairs um, and modifying homes. So again, very excited to launch this program for 2023 and hope to receive a lot of applications to serve more residents this year. And um, Last thing, phone number for folks who are calling in. Um, to find out more information, please call 412-255-6694, extension two, or I'm sorry, extension 6721. And again, um, an application can be provided as well as further details by emailing hoff at ura.org. 
thank you very much. Thanks, Melinda. Um, any questions or comments from the board? Representative Morano, see if you come up here. Or just a brief comment. Um, Melinda, I just wanted to thank you and the team at the URA who have worked on this program. Um, the HAP program was one of the many programs that inspired um, the whole home repairs legislation that, that we got in last year's budget, um, because we know there is such a demand, not only in the city of Pittsburgh, but throughout Allegheny County in this Commonwealth. So thank you for being creative um, and recognizing the needs of people and know that the work that you have done has um, been scaled up um, across this commonwealth with the deployment of that program and you know we're entering budget season and you know we hope to find sustained funding for it so we can help the most amount of people through programs such as these so thank you any other questions or comments from folks I, yeah, thanks, Melinda. Thank you, Director, everyone, for, for your work on this. Um, you know, I, you. I, I think we know it is something that, you know, there's more uh, demand than, than we're able to uh, deliver. I, there was, you know, comment earlier on, on ways in which we can think about, you know, making the uh, deployment of those resources more equitable. I know those are things that you all take seriously and in consideration um, as we refine it and continue to lead the way for the state to look to us um, on how to how to you know deploy funds uh, that are sort of needed across um, not just Pittsburgh but but the broad Commonwealth. So thank you all for your work on this. Um, and June 26th, um, not not before, right? So we'll we'll yes. make sure folks get their applications in. That's the Excellent. magic date. <laughs> thank you all. Uh, our last announcement is um, related to the LA Grocery uh, American Rescue Plan Act Grant Award. And joining us for this will be Lily Friedman. Thank you, Chairman, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lily Friedman, and I'm the Manager of Development Projects in the URA's Development Services Unit. Today, I'd like to announce that the URA has accepted an American Rescue Plan Act Grant Award from the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development in the amount of $250,000. This award will be dispersed to neighborhood allies for the renovations and expansion of LA Grocery on Larmer Avenue in the Larmer neighborhood of the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, the URA is excited to be a partner as grant funds will be used for architecture services, a building addition, and kitchen equipment to support LA Grocery in providing more fresh food and a dining experience. A special thank you goes out to Senator Lindsey Williams for all of her support of LA Grocery and the Larmer community. That concludes this announcement. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Um, any questions or comments from the board on this? I just wanna echo the gratitude to Senator Williams and securing this money through uh, DCED. You know, we've seen the amount of investment that's gone into the Larmer neighborhood. And while new development is great, there's people who have been there, people in small businesses that have been there for sometimes generations. And we want to make sure that they get to stay and benefit from those new investments. So this is an example of, you know, being intentional of keeping people and businesses in place so that they can be part of the future of a neighborhood. So just want to echo that gratitude towards Senator Williams and the administration and the folks at DCD for recognizing that important um, aspect of development. Agreed. Um, I know this is one that the Larmer Consensus Group has been, you know, looking to support for quite some time for all the reasons that Representative Inamorano said, um, LA Grocery has been you know, serving that community for a while and it's an important mainstay uh, for them. And it's you know, a, a neighbor that they care about. So um, exciting to see this move forward. So Lily, thank you for your work on this. Um, thank you to Senator Williams, DCD, and their team uh, for helping to, to provide this you know, needed support to get the project moving forward. Um, and hopefully we'll see it back soon as uh, you know, it continues to advance. So thank you again. Moving on into residential lending and investments. Um, our first item here is the affordable housing bond issuance. Um, 
our Chief Housing Officer, Kiana Wasser, and Director of Housing, Evan Miller, will be joining us today. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, I'm Kiana Wasser, Chief Housing Officer of the URA. As announced publicly last week in conjunction with the city, the URA is beginning the process of issuing a bond or series of bonds to support affordable housing in Pittsburgh. Recent years have seen an enhanced commitment locally to affordable housing as evidenced by the Housing Opportunity Fund, Pittsburgh's Affordable Housing Trust Fund, which was operationalized by the URA in 2018, with a pledge from the city of 10 million per year over the course of 12 years. While the Housing Opportunity Fund has been an invaluable resource in the face of dwindling state and federal funding, the reality remains that the affordable housing challenges that, face, that the city faces, excuse me, require additional interventions. This bond issuance is a significant commitment towards meeting those challenges head on. The first resolution being considered today allows for several key points of action that will make this issuance possible, including A, the approval of the issuance of the bonds in an amount of between 25 and $42 million based on prevailing market conditions. B, the approval of the, of the bond indenture and C, the sale of the bonds. The second resolution before you allows for the URA to enter into a cooperative agreement with the city of Pittsburgh. The cooperative agreement will authorize the city to allocate $2.5 million per year for a 25 year period to service the bonds. This bond funding is contingent upon city council's approval. City legislative action has already begun with a bill being introduced to council this week on Tuesday, June 6. The URA will use the housing bond proceeds to enhance efforts around affordable housing and to bolster programming to serve our residents. This funding is intended to empower and incentivize development partners that share the values and goals of advancing the mission of safe, quality, and fair affordable housing. The estimated time to issue the bonds and receive the proceeds is three to five months. Prior to the bonds being priced, any specific any speculation on specific programmatic uses and propo proposed production can ultimately impact the pricing in a negative way. For this reason, right now, the URA is limited in how much detail can be shared. But as this process commences, the URA, the URA is dedicated to working with our bond team as well as our community partners to ensure that we are maximizing the impact of this monumental investment and communicating as much as we can throughout the process. For the record, joining us today are URA Bond Counsel Andrew Marr of Denton's, URA Bond Underwriter Antonio Masidi, managing who is the Managing Director of PNC Capital Markets, and the URA's fin financial advisor in this endeavor, Victor Chang of Kane Mitter. The, this bond issuance is an exciting opportunity for the city of Pittsburgh that rightfully has received much attention so far. We look forward to continuing conversations with the board and the public as the process continues. Thank you for your time today. Uh, Director Miller, the bond team and I will now receive any questions that the board may have. Thank you, Chief Wassler. Um, yeah, it, any questions, comments from the board? I know we, we've all spoke uh, at length last Tuesday, but uh, for purposes of, of the board meeting today, you know, for the public, um, you know, I'll open up the floor. Thank you. Uh, I'll be very brief. I just want to thank the administration as well as all those at the URA for working on this and moving this forward. Just to highlight something Ms. Wasser said and to respond to, I think it was the last public speaker we had. We're, I think we're all in an agreement that we're certainly open to a very robust conversation of how these dollars will be spent. Um, but first we need to secure them and that's gonna take some time. And so I also just wanna urge my colleagues on the city council side of things to also not procrastinate, but to move the bills as expeditiously as we're allowed to, um, and then vote this and move it forward. And then after we secure it, we can then have a very robust conversation of how they'll be spent. Thank you, council. Any other 
questions or comments? Um, Councilman, I, I think we'd be remiss not to acknowledge your leadership on this um, issue, the bond specifically, affordable housing, obviously, generally, but on this specific issue with the bond for years, um, you and, and Reverend Burgess have been calling for the city to take such action. So um, I know from our standpoint in the administration, you know, we're, we're, we're excited to be able to get to this step, you know, the next step of the way in the process, but um, acknowledge, you know, the, the call for this that you all have done and, and the work that you've put forth. Um, can't thank the staff enough, um, you know, Chief Wasser, Director Miller, um, everyone on the, the team in the housing department, everyone on our, our legal team, um, you know, comms and, and everyone else who've, um, you know, worked to pull all of this together as we go along and make sure, again, that we're communicating it clearly um, along the way as much as we can. Um, and then to Tony, Andrew and Victor um, who've supported us. Um, as we've gone through this again, thank you for your guidance um, that you've provided to make sure that we're um, telling the public everything that we can while still being responsible and, and you know, maximizing the dollars that we ultimately bring to bear, um, acknowledging the, the you know, problem before us and the urgency in which we want to be able to um, respond to those needs. So um, if there's no other comments or, or questions from board members, I'll entertain a motion to um, approve uh, both of the authorizations before us, um, items 5A1 and 2. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, uh, staying in residential lending and investments is um, the Hill District Bedford Dwellings Phase 1A and 1B. Uh, joining us for this will be Nicholas Person. Uh, Nicholas, turn it over to you. Thanks, Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicholas Person. I'm a lending analyst in the residential lending department of the URA. And today I am requesting from the board authorization to enter into two rental gap program loan agreements, one with the borrower Bedford Dwellings Phase 1A in the amount of $1 million, and the other with the borrower Bedford Dwellings Phase 1B in the amount of also $1 million. Both of these loans will be used towards the new construction of Bedford Dwellings Phase 1, the first development phase in the Bedford Choice Neighborhoods Initiative in the Hill District. The site of development is currently vacant land and lies at the intersections of Reed, Miller, Roberts, and Heldman Street in the Crawford Roberts neighborhood between Center Avenue, Fifth Avenue. Both of these borrowers are single purpose entities formed by the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh and Trek Development Incorporated. This phase is a team development effort between the two and it involves using this land to construct 123 new residential units. Of these units, 99 will be rented affordably to tenants with incomes no greater than 30, 50, and 60% of area median income. 90 of these units will hold project-based vouchers and will serve as one-for-one -one replacement housing for residents living in the Summers Drive units of the current Bedford dwellings. This reflects one of the overarching goals of the Bedford Choice Neighborhoods Initiative, which is to provide one-for-one -one replacement housing for all current residents of Bedford dwellings. The development team will be utilizing multiple different funding sources for phase one, including Pennsylvania State Tax Credits, Allies and Ross Management and Development Corporation dollars, Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency dollars, as well as both 9% and 4% low-income housing tax credits. The 9% tax credits will be used to fund Phase 1A, which involves the construction of a four-story, 30-unit apartment building along Reed Street and 12 townhomes along Miller Street. The 4% tax credits will be used to fund Phase 1B, which involves the construction of a six-story, 43-unit apartment building for seniors 55 and over, and the construction of six townhouses along Reed and Heldon Street, respectively. The total development cost for Phase 1A is roughly $29.6 million, and for Phase 1B, it is $27.8 million. The developer has approached the URA requesting additional gap financing through the rental gap program. Both of these loans will be structured as cash flow repayment with a term of 40 years and a 0% interest rate. A deed restriction would also be made to secure long-term affordability over a period of 40 years. 
The RGP loan for phase 1A would be sourced with home investment partnership program funds, and the phase 1B loan would be sourced from the housing opportunity fund. Both loan amounts are set at 1 million. However, the amounts may increase to 2 million and 5 million respectively if the URA receives community development block grant fiscal year 2023 funds in support of the Bedford Choice Neighborhoods Initiative. The development team is aiming for a closing for Bedford Dwellings Phase 1 at the end of the summer, with construction to be completed by the summer of 2025. And that is my presentation. Thank you all very much for listening. I would now like to introduce Addie Cullen, Project Manager of Bedford Dwellings uh, and Trek Development, to provide a few brief remarks regarding the project. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for having us on today's call. Um, really appreciate your support when it comes to the Choice Initiative, especially our first phase. Uh, we're really excited to get this started uh, later this summer and look forward to finding a funding new, safe, affordable housing, especially for residents at Bedford Dwellings that so desperately need uh, new housing since it is over 80 years old. Thanks, Nicholas. Thanks, Eddie. Um, any questions or comments from board members? I have a quick one. I, I think harkening back to some of the uh, public comment in the very beginning, it's really important to acknowledge that these replacements are critical because we are also building those family, um, uh, those units that are suitable for family that uh, Megan and others have talked about. And so these are um, not just uh, one bedrooms or two bedrooms as we're used to seeing often in front of this board, they're three bedrooms, they're family, um, family focused uh, housing units. Uh, and so like the Armor Choice, um, uh, I think it's really exciting that we're able to um, bring projects like this that are thinking about families inclusively, um, as well as bring together so many different departments across the city and, and all the resources that they, that they provide uh, to make this happen. Thank you, Director Powell. Um, Nicholas, just, just for clarification purposes, the, the note kind of in the actions about the loans increasing, um, if the URA receives the CDBG, you know, fiscal year 2023 funds, um, there are, you know, those funds allocated and, and the councilman can speak to this too in, in the budget, um, for choice, you know, from CDBG. So I, I just to clarify, it's more, or are we talking here more about the timing of when HUD, you know, loads or delivers the funds rather, rather than like if, you know, cause it's, since it's already in the budget, I guess I just want to clarify what we're actually talking about there. The city's budget, pardon me. Right, exactly. So there's already the understanding that the city will have we have yet it receiving these CDBG funds towards later either this year or towards the end of this year or at the beginning of next year. And so the idea is that when these funds are received, that then the the amount of these loans will increase the to the amounts that were uh, that were stated. Okay. Thank you. Chairman, if I could just add, it's it's to ensure that we can get the project to closing perhaps before we actually have those funds physically in hand here at the URA. Um, so having this commitment can hopefully get other lenders involved in the deal comfortable to get to a closing um, later this summer, or early in the fall. Got it. Yep. Okay. Thank you both. Um, I, I think we've seen this project a few times uh, for different actions. So, um, you know, it's exciting to see the financing moving forward um, for the reasons Director Powell noted, um, as well as Nicholas in your presentation, the importance of, you know, the commitment in this effort to one for one replacement. And then I would say just as importantly, building first so that um, there, there aren't temporary moves for the residents of Bedford and, you know, they only have to move once. Um, which we know is is critical towards making sure folks have the opportunity to stay in their neighborhoods. Um, so um, excited to see this before us. Uh, if there aren't any other questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So move. Move a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. One abstention. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you all.
Thank you. Uh, moving uh, from residential lending and investments into development services. Our first item here is uh, the Hunt Armory. Joining us for this will be our Chief Development Officer, Tom Link. Yeah, yeah thanks so much, uh, Chair. Thanks so much to the board. Uh, Tom Link, uh, Chief Development Officer uh, for the Urban Redevelopment Authority. Um, you know, this authorization being requested here today by the uh, for the board is to uh, allow the authority to enter into an option agreement uh, for the sale of the Hunt Armory uh, to the Pittsburgh Penguins or related entity uh, for $2 million plus costs. Uh, for a bit of history, um, you know, certainly the Hunt Armory, an historic landmark, you know, served as most of its 100 plus years as a, as a structure as the home to the National Guard in various capacities uh, as an armory. Uh, when the National Guard vacated the building in 2013 and 2016, uh, the URA acquired the Hunt Armory from the Commonwealth, from the, from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, uh, effectuated in 2016. And also as a reminder to the board and to the public, in 2019, as part of uh, the URA's agreement with the Commonwealth, uh, paid an additional $1 million uh, to the Commonwealth for the acquisition uh, of, of the Hunt Armory. Um, since 2021, uh, the URA has licensed uh, the armory to, uh, for, to the Penguins uh, related entity really to uh, operate a, a indoor ice rink. Uh, so in you know, 21, the season 2021, 2022, and again in the season 2022, 2023, and we plan to uh, subject to, um, you know, there, I know there's a temporary use uh, process plan out from a zoning perspective, but subject to you know, the appropriate entitlements plan to license again for season 23 and 24, uh, the operation of the armory as a, a community ice rink, just for, you know, for the board and for the public's um, you know, knowledge, it's, it's, it's been well used. I, you know, if I believe in the last season, 2022, 20, 20, 2023, I believe over 27,000 individuals utilize the armory uh, as a rank, both in terms of attendance at, uh, at uh, hockey matches, uh, community public skates, instruction, uh, et cetera. So it, it's, it's grown in popularity and, 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 I, and is a, you know, well received and a, and a welcome asset, I think, for the city, uh, also as the city's only indoor uh, ice rink uh, that serves uh, our community. It's home to you know, Chatham University. Uh, women's and men's hockey teams. Uh, a veterans uh, hockey league uh, is is, is operate is uh, using the rink. Uh, uh, the Pittsburgh Warriors. So it's you know it's, it's sort of growing in its uh, in its uh, its value and in its um, you know service to our city uh, in that regard. So the authorization here allows us to enter into an option agreement. I think it's important for clarity, you know, for the board and for the public. This is not a sale today of the armory. It allows us to enter into an agreement which provides an option uh, for the sale at $2 million. Should the option be exercised, it doesn't have to be exercised, but should the option be exercised, it would come back uh, to the board and to the public's view, uh, you know, per the URA's uh, you know, disposition process to receive proposal and have that considered by the board and by the public uh, for the eventual actual sale of the property should, we, uh, should, we, should that occur uh, over the next several months. But this allows us to enter into that agreement to allow, you know, set a price of $2 million and allow us to enter into that option agreement uh, for the potential sale. Uh, again, should it be exercised, this is more of a beginning, not a, certainly not an end uh, or an effectuated sale of the property. Um, you know, I'll leave my presentation at that. I know that the, I believe Craig Dunham, that's interesting in the virtual environment, but I'll leave Craig Dunham's in our audience and can certainly answer any questions as to the operations or, or sort of vision for the armory uh, that, 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 that uh, exists. And, um, you know, I'll leave the presentation there and uh, thank you. And again, certainly, you know, Craig can, can jump in and certainly open for the, you know, the board to ask, ask and, and, and answer questions uh, as needed. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I, I know there's a few folks here from the Penguins team. So Craig, if that's how you come off mute, you want to add anything or, or um, Kevin or Dusty? Sure, I'll, I'll take uh, take a moment. This is, uh, Craig Dunham with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Thank you for the overview, Tom. Um, and again, thank you for the board and staff for their support the past few years while we've uh, really gone through a pr proof of concept effort to uh, get operational. We've had growth in util utilization, attendance, and partners. As Tom outlined, we've made some investments in the building in order to achieve that. And uh, we look forward to continuing that 
for this third season. Meanwhile, um, given given support for this option, um, we'll we'll pursue an earnest uh, acquisition and a long range uh, redevelopment plan. We'll share that with the public. We'll share that with the community and the URA at large. And uh, hopefully by the end of the year, be able to come back and and exercise the option and move move towards a, quote, a closing. Um, we understand the core principles here of, of community serving, uh, skating and ice being the priority uh, for the community after previous uh, RFPs and efforts and surveys. And uh, we look forward to continuing the effort to realize the potential for this amazing building. Thank you. Yeah, Craig, this is uh, Kevin Acklin, uh, members of the board, Mr. Chairman, uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, obviously, this is a um, the history of this project, as uh, Director Link mentioned. Uh, the idea for an ice rink came from the community. The URA in the past uh, went to market. There was a robust public engagement around potential uses for the armory. Um, obviously, in my prior role uh, as a colleague of yours in the city, when I, I served the mayor's office, I tried to get the Penguins to step up and, and bring community programming to this site. Um, you know, it's right on the edge of the east end of areas of the city where, you know, we need to provide more opportunities for kids to learn the intangibles of, of the game, you know, teamwork, hard work showing up and, and you know, now I am the Penguins, so uh, we're, we are stepping up and, and trying to do, or at least lead the Penguins, uh, we're, we're trying to do the right thing here, um, you know, heretofore there was no other sheet of ice in the, in the city of Pittsburgh uh, that's suitable for hockey, uh, other than PPG Paints Arena. And that's unacceptable uh, if we're going to be a team that is working uh, with our community leaders, uh, with our elected officials to try to build greater equity in the city and, and provide opportunities uh, for, for city youth. So I give a lot of credit um, you know, to Councilwoman uh, Strasberger, who has been uh, a proponent of this project. Again, uh, this was sort of a field of dreams when we started it two years ago. We built it and people showed up. Um, we had a, a series of robust conversations uh, with the community in Shadyside and beyond in East Liberty. Um, you know, we tested the market over the last two years, had a, a very positive response. Over 25,000 people used the armory last year, not only for, for hockey, but for recreational skating. And so, you know, we're proud to step up and partner uh, with the URA uh, to, to consider a longer term use of this building. And we're willing to raise the money to make it happen. So again, uh, Councilman Strasberger has been a, lead, a leader of this. Mayor Ganey uh, has been there and in, in, in support of, uh, as well as Senator Jay Costa, um, who has been a proponent of the project. So we appreciate everybody's participation. I know the community, as this has been received well, we've stayed ahead of parking concerns and made sure that we've been good neighbors and we're looking to be a long-term steward of this project uh, for years to come. Thank you both. Um, any questions, comments from board members? Does the $2 million amount allow us, allow the URA to get out what we put into it? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Plus costs, it says. Plus so. costs, right, yeah. It will be made whole if this, again, if this were to be exercised and we were to get to a closing, yeah. Okay. Councilman, I think implicit in your question is where I was going to start my comment and that I know this has been a long time coming um, and that, that comes with costs, uh, both from when the authority decided to take on this asset in order to preserve, you know, the opportunity for there to be a community conversation and, and, and what ultimately happened here. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the efforts the Penguins have put forth to stick with it for this long. Um, it, although, you know, from our fiduciary's responsibility, it is exciting to see it moving towards a sale and, and um, you know, thank both sides in terms of working towards an option agreement that's, you know, mutually beneficial and, and ideally, you know, we're, we're voting in several months here on um, moving forward, you know, through the disposition process with the sale of the property. So um, thank you for the efforts to, to get to this point and, and look forward to, you know, continuing to move forward. So. Um, unless there are any other comments or, or questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I am. Um, well, I just wanted to add briefly. I, you know, this yeah. is great to see this moving forward, as everyone has said so far. Um, you know, it, 
also is a good reminder of you know, how the URA can step in in a situation uh, like this one and make sure that the community's interests are centered in the development process. If we hadn't acquired this property in the first place, the state would have run out to market with it and it you know, just would have been sold to the highest bidder and probably ended up as market rate housing or something like that. Uh, this way, we we're able to, uh, you know, make sure that that community input process that Kevin referenced, uh, you know, uh, had an impact on the eventual uh, use of the building. And, you know, that's a good thing for the city and it's also a good thing for the city for the URA to be made hold on, on the back end. So <laughs> it's great to see this moving forward. Here, here. So I'll make a motion for no. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda uh, in Beachview 1602 to 1606 Broadway Avenue. And joining us for this is Lily Friedman again. Thank you, Chairman. And hello again, everyone. Today, we are requesting two board authorizations related to Casa San Jose's proposed community center development in Beachview neighborhood of the city of Pittsburgh. First, we request an authorization to enter into a services agreement with Lab 8 Designs, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $167,000 for architecture services at the 1602 Broadway Avenue site. And second, we request authorization to enter into a Memorandum of Understanding or MOU with Casa San Jose to clarify roles and responsibilities in relation to the Corin Shell construction scope of the development at the Broadway Avenue site. Next slide, please. For those of you who may not be familiar, Casa San Jose is a community resource center that advocates for and empowers Latinx communities by promoting integration and self-sufficiency. The renovation of, in addition to the building located at 1602 to 1606 Broadway Avenue, is planned to provide Casa San Jose the opportunity to expand services and offer additional programming for all ages with new offices, kitchen amenities, and community gathering spaces. Phase one of this effort includes a URA-led core and shell construction scope financed by American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, and Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program funding. Architecture services specifically will be funded by ARPA. The MOU between Casa San Jose and the URA will clarify roles and responsibilities of the development partnership for phase one of the project. Please note, this project is planned to return to the URA board for authorization of construction contracts of phase one and board actions for future phases of the project, including actions related to the intended disposition of the property to Casa San Jose. Dennis Stover was invited here today from the Casa San Jose development team to help answer any questions the board may have. Let's see if Dennis is on the line yet. Okay, I don't see Dennis on the line. Um, so we can go ahead with questions that the board may have at this time. Thank you, Lily. Um, any questions or comments from board members? It's a quick comment. Um, I, I, we talked a little bit about this in the introduction of, of this particular uh, vote, but Gata does amazing work, not just uh, in that neighborhood, but across the city. And it's really wonderful to see that the URA is able to accommodate their growth, uh, not just for um, the uh, Latinos that they serve across uh, the city and, and county, uh, but really what they bring to the richness of our uh, neighborhoods. So really excited to see this continue to move forward. Thank you, Director Powell. It does look like Dennis is on, if someone's able to elevate um, him to a panelist, if he wants to speak, if has anything to add. While we wait for that to happen, and, um, any other questions or comments from board members? I just want to echo what Director Powell said in acknowledging the work that Casa San Jose is doing um, across this region for the Latino community and our Spanish speaking neighbors. Um, and what's so great about this location specifically, it's across the street from the 
Pittsburgh Hispanic Development Corporation, which they work with closely. So um, they're really, you know, part of the vibrancy that's happening on that end of Pittsburgh. So um, again, grateful for the team at the URA to accommodate the needs of a small but mighty and um, impactful organization that we are so fortunate to have in our region. Yeah, thank you, Representative Morano. I, I would echo your comments, Director Powell's comments, um, and as a former um, Beachview resident, know how important and critical this corner is to, to the main street and the neighborhood fabric there. So it's great that we're able to preserve the building and, and you know, put a um, organization in there that's, that's serving a growing population within that community and as has been said, you know, across the, the city and the region. So um, there's, there's a lot to, you know, really like about the project here and, and support it. So it's exciting to see um, us taking this first step. It looks like uh, Dennis is, is on now, so we'll give him a moment to, to you know, make any remarks or add anything to the presentation that Lily gave. Uh, hi, this is Dennis Stover. I'm the treasurer and a board member at Casa San Jose. Uh, and on behalf of the Casa board and executive director, we'd like to thank you for your consideration of this project. Uh, as already has been commented, this is the perfect location. We're, this is this building, it's dead center in the middle of Beachview, which is the largest Latino community in Allegheny County. Uh, and this property will allow us to dramatically expand our services to that community. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Dennis. Um, if there are no other questions or comments from the board, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So move. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item in development services is uh, in Upper Lawrenceville, um, Friends of the Pittsburgh Urban Forest, otherwise known as Tree Pittsburgh. Uh, joining us for this will be ML Myers. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is ML Meyer. I'm the URA's Director of Real Estate. The action before you today is authorization to enter into a contract for disposition by sale of land with Friends of the Pittsburgh Urban Forest, DBA Tree Pittsburgh, and to execute a deed for the sale of Block 120G, Lot 155 in Upper Lawrenceville for $365,000. This is pursuant to Tree Pittsburgh's exercise of its option to purchase the property. Once the deed is recorded, the previous contract for disposition by lease of land for the property will terminate. This property is a narrow, approximately five acre parcel located between the Allegheny Valley Railroad right of way and the Allegheny River at 62nd Street. It's part of a larger, approximately 21 acre property the URA purchased from Tippins in 2008. Tree Pittsburgh began leasing the property for a tree nursery in January, 2015. In September, 2015, the URA board approved Tree Pittsburgh's redevelopment proposal and authorized a lease and form of contract for disposition by lease of land for the property. In March, 2017, the board approved final drawings, final evidence of financing, and the long-term lease, along with an option agreement for Tree Pittsburgh's eventual purchase of the property. Tree Pittsburgh redeveloped the property with a campus facility designed to achieve LEED Platinum and Net Zero Energy certifications. The campus includes office and classroom space, a workshop, special events and rental space, and a heritage nursery that's a model for sustainable agriculture. In May 2020, the board authorized a certificate of completion for the project, and that's been recorded. Tree Pittsburgh notified the URA of its intent to exercise its option to purchase the property, and again, authorization is now sought to enter into a contract for disposition by sale of land with Tree Pittsburgh and to execute a deed for the sale of the property for $365,000, as the option stipulates. Once the deed is recorded, the previous contract for disposition by lease of land for the property with Tree Pittsburgh will terminate. 
If there are questions about this, Danielle Crumrine, Tree, Tree Pittsburgh's executive director is with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Director Meyer. Uh, Danielle, if you have anything you'd like to add to, to Director Meyer's presentation for the benefit of the board. No, can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, great. Yeah, no, just thank you so much. It's been it's been a long journey and we've worked really hard to get to this point and I, I'm really excited and, and I hope we'll all be celebrating together when it, after we close on the property. That's great, thank you. Any questions or, or comments from the board? I just want to thank Danielle and her team and Tree Pittsburgh. They've been a wonderful neighbor uh, in Lawrenceville, which is where I live, and a great partner to community organizations and municipalities across this region um, in really strengthening our tree canopy um, and helping us address um, climate concerns in a, in a very real and tangible way. So just grateful for the work that that organization does and um, looking forward to um, them uh, this next process for them. Yeah, thank you. My board uh, treasurer is on the call as well, and Frank's just to acknowledge her presence at the meeting as well. Uh, yeah, thank uh, thank you for all for uh, moving this forward. I, I you know, as, as uh, Director Meyer said, it's been quite a few years uh, with with the lease agreement and, and even longer with our ownership of the site. So it's good to see a portion of it moving forward. Um, you know, as we continue to to look for for uses there. Um, so Danielle and your team um, echo you know the comments from Representative Inamorato, um for what you're able to to help do in the city. Um, and you know, excited that now you have sort of the certainty of a permanent home, um, you know, as the sale uh, you know moves forward here. So, uh, if there are no other questions or comments from board members, we'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Wonderful. The motion carries. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Moving into neighborhood business district services. Our only item on this portion of the agenda is um, Avenues of Hope ARPA grant program awards round one. And joining us for this will be Talia O'Brien. Talia. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Talia O'Brien and I'm a neighborhood business district program analyst here at the URA. And I'd like to start off by thanking the board for giving me the opportunity to present round one fun funding recommendations for our Avenues of Hope American Rescue Plan Act grant program. Round one of this new grant program came to a close on April 30th, 2023, and we received 45 applications across seven corridors. Over the month of May, applications went through an extensive review period, which consisted of a community input and cross-department, cross-departmental collaboration with the city of Pittsburgh, which brings me here today to request uh, authorization to enter into 21 Avenues of Hope grant agreements and related contracts with 20 organizations in a cumulative not to exceed amount of $2,425,958. Next slide. So we're going to um, start going through the uh, funding recommendations in descending order by corridor awards. Mm -hmm. And we are going to begin with Center Avenue. So here you can see that we are, we are recommending six projects along the Center Avenue corridor totaling up to $559,512. They are as follows. Hill House redevelopment for building recommend renovations. Heron Village for renovations to three mixed use commercial spaces. Hill District Federal Credit Union for expanding their current storefront. Black Beauty Cafe for conversion of their commercial lounge space. First Sip Studios to run a six month cohort to provide media technical assistance to small businesses and Catapult Greater Pittsburgh for store improvements and upgrades to their gallery on center storefront. And I do want to uh, note that you will see uh, First Sip Studios on each of the corridor award lists 
the recipient will will deploy the six month technical assistance program equally within each of the seven corridors for a total award of two hundred thousand dollars that we have evenly distributed within each of the each of the seven neighborhoods. Next slide. Moving forward to Perrysville Avenue, which is one corridor, but we have separate separated the slides into North and South Perrysville Avenue uh, for investment visibility. You can see on the map here. So uh, North Perrysville Avenue will be focused in the Observatory Hill neighborhood. So first we have Observatory Hill Coffee Shop for vacant structure reclamation, Ida Sandwich Shop for COVID-19 recovery support, Observatory Hill Delhi for COVID-19 recovery support, and again, First Hip Studios for the Technical Assistance Cohort Program. You can see that the North Perrysville Avenue round total is a one, 194,286 maximum request or award. Next slide. Moving into the Southern node of Perrysville Avenue, uh, we do have two guest uh, speakers to join us to join us uh, today, two recipients, uh, one of Nancy Noska from Perry, Perry Hilltop Citizens Council and La Teresa Blackwell, the business owner of Avenue Cafe Premier and Daycare Center, which you can see here is the first funding recommendation for vacant, uh, vacant building and reclamation as well. So um, at this moment, I will invite Nancy and La Teresa, if you're on the line, if you would like to unmute and add anything to the discussion, uh, I will give you some space to do so. Hi, this is La Teresa Blackwell. I am just so excited and so honored to be here for this opportunity. I just wanna clap my hands Ooh, this has been a long journey, a long time. What a milestone. And we are just truly grateful for this opportunity. On behalf of Perry Hilltop Citizens Council and myself, we would like to thank you for this opportunity, this grand opportunity where it's been a long journey for us. We're excited and can't wait until we're able to celebrate the groundbreaking and all that's going to take place in this corridor. This is something that I wanted to say in terms of what our former mayor, Mr. William Peduto stated, it's time to invest where investment is needed. Investing in Pittsburgh's historically black neighborhoods. So this is so important that we reinvest back into our communities. And I'm just honored to be a recipient of this round of award. Uh, grant money. So thank you again. Um, we're looking to take this vacant blighted site and transform it into a daycare center where we'll be able to actually uh, take care of a hundred, over a hundred children. So we'll be able to service a hundred children and offer 16 jobs within that space. So we're excited about it. And again, we want to just say thank you. Thank you so much, Lashrisa. I'm not sure if uh, if Nancy from Perry Hilltop Citizens Council is on the line and wanted to add anything. She was on the line, Talia, but she had to drop off because of a um, appointment she had to attend. But she wanted me to again extend our deepest thanks for this opportunity. Okay, great. Thank you for that update. Uh, moving on to the second project for the Southern Perrysville Avenue node uh, for Wilson's Barbecue, and lastly, uh, again, for First Sip Studios for a total of $284,286. Next slide. Homewood Avenue, we are proposing, uh, recommending three projects uh, for the James T. Givner Building, which is for the build out of two commercial spaces and also a Community Empowerment Association for their community plaza and facade, which is a construction of outdoor public space and a community asset. And uh, of course, again, First Sip Studios for their technical assistance cohort program for a round one total of $428,572 maximum award. 
And we should have Rashad Birdsong, the founder and CEO of the Community Empowerment Association joining us on the line. If you would uh, like to say a few, say a few words, Rashad. Good afternoon, uh, Rashad Birdsong, CEO of Community Empowerment Association. And as well, I'm equally excited uh, to see this level of investment into the Homewood community. Uh, we're in the, uh, the old uh, school, Holy Rosary School. Uh, and I have, have had a cultural uh, imprint in our community for over 50 years, close to. So uh, this year, uh, initiative and project will be an opportunity that we continue uh, to follow the history uh, of, you know, Holy Rosary and also Community Power Association uh, that's been in Homewood for 30 years, uh, that's serving uh, youth children, uh, you know, in our, in our, in our organization. Uh, this year, Plaza is going to be opening up our organization. Uh, we're going to be uh, taking down the fence, doing some, some work out, some fa facade out around the building. And uh, uh, this opportunity, again, I think it opened up uh, more participation in our community with CEA, plus it connects to a lot of other development uh, that's going on in the Homewood community uh, today. So again, I'd like to thank you know everyone for... Uh, uh, for this opportunity and investment uh, in Homewood. Thanks so much, Rashad. Next slide, please. Go ahead and move on to Second Avenue. Proposing four projects here, the, the first being Pulses Digital Studio for renovations uh, to, the small, and to the small business office and studio space, Equity One Stop Shop for the bathroom and kitchen renovations to their community space, again, for SIP Studios for the technical assistance cohort, and lastly, Hazelwood Initiative Commercial Property Improvements for capital improvements on four commercial properties within the business district for a round one total of $329,322 next. <laughs> next slide. Moving into Larmer Avenue, we're proposing three projects. First being Larmer for white box improvements from PEIDC for commercial space build out. Urban Academy of Greater Pittsburgh Charter School Community Development and Revitalization for improvements to a community center. And again, first SIP Studios for the technical assistance cohort for a round one total of $327,336. Next slide. Moving on to East Warrington Avenue in the Brownsville Road Corridor. Uh, we are proposing three projects, uh, one for Paramount Pursuits for a 12 month cohort uh, to provide business mentorship to businesses within uh, both of the corridors there. Hilltop Alliance and Knoxville Community Council Small Business Signage and Support Grants uh, to provide facade and support grants to small businesses within both of the both of the corridors. And again, for SIP Studios for around one total of $175,000, $175,000. $175,072 maximum. And I did uh, make a note here that since uh, all three of these projects in this corridor will be serving both of uh, both East Warrington Avenue and Brownsville Road, Road equally, that's why you'll see there on the map, each of them listed uh, within both of, the, both of the notes. And lastly, the Shortiers Avenue corridor, we're proposing uh, two projects the same 12 month cohort program through Paramount Pursuits and six month cohort technical assistance program through First Sip Studios for a total of $127,572. And we can move on to the last slide, which we included a, um, a visual chart for the funding that, uh, that would be awarded and what remains for each of the corridors pending board approval of these awards today, um, which we will make this available on our website for folks to, to kind of get an idea of how much of the grant fund remains and uh, maybe you know looking into some other opportunities and corridors where, that have more funding remaining 
when they're thinking of applying for the upcoming the upcoming deadlines and funding rounds on July 31st. And at this point, I will open it up to any questions that we can answer regarding this request. Thank you, Talia. <laughs> there, there was a lot to cover. So first, thank you for that. Um, in addition to the, to, to the work of, of going through, um, you know, the applications and working with all the applicants. Um, if, are there any questions or comments for the board? Um, I know there was a lot there to kind of take in in a good way. Um, Hi. Yes. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Hi, Talia. I have a quick question for you. Can you give us a sense of how many MWBE businesses we are awarding um, these grants to? Yes, definitely. So out of the um, 21 recipients, 12 of them are MWBEs. However, we did have a few um, a few applicants apply on behalf of businesses. So uh, that number jumps to 18 when you take into account uh, the, the businesses that will be, receive direct support from these grants. Oh, so 18 out of 21, that's, that's incredible. So thank you for your work on that. Um, and thanks for the community groups who are doing the outreach and getting the word out about this process. Um, so since we're at this point, can you tell us kind of when, what the timeline is for the next round of applicants? Yeah, absolutely. So the, our next uh, deadline for applying is July 31st, and then we will have two more um, as funds allow on September 30th and December 31st. Great, thank you. Thank you. Quick question along the lines of um, representatives comment question. For the uh, avenues of hope where we don't have, um, where we have like fewer uh, awards funded. Uh, could we talk a little bit about our outreach strategy and how we're talking to community groups and how we've gotten the word out there that this money is available uh, for these areas? Yeah, absolutely. So um, prior to when, prior to the funding rounds opening, we did a planning study in both Chartiers and Perrysville communities, which we um, kind of anticipated less less engagement with those two communities since we have um, historically the least investment in those areas. So uh, through that planning study, we aim to get the word out, which is actually a lot of the folks who are on the community advisory committees for reviewing these applications uh, were involved in those processes. And we're really um, relying on those community stakeholders to help us uh, get the word out uh, and reaching out to small businesses that we've had um, previous involvement with on different URA products, as well as attending uh, community meetings as well. Thank you so much. I know you guys have poured a lot of thought as well as uh, people power and time uh, into making this super successful. So thank you so much for um, the outreach on round one and the anticipated outreach on round two. Thank you. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that long ago we were just approving the program guidelines. So, um, you know, it, it it's impressive <laughs> that we're that we're awarding this many grants and received that many applications. Um, notwithstanding, you know, the additional outreach, um, you know, that you're talking about, Talia, in in those areas, you know, where where um, we thought, you know, we'd need to do a little bit more, and and you know, we're going to do that. So, um, it's great, um, you know, to to see everyone thinking a few steps ahead um, so that we can make sure to, to get this money out and available. Um, you know, it's $2.4 million going towards um, those business districts across all across the city, um, you know, in order to be able to, to make sure that we're investing in those uh, business districts that, you know, have historically been disinvested in. So um, I applaud the, the work of the staff um, and it's great. You know, I think this is a good example of uh, American Rescue Plan dollars being put to work uh, for the benefit of our communities um, and you know the benefit of our residents. So I do, do want to acknowledge you know that investment by the gov federal government in um, the city and and you know city council and, and the administration's um, you know allocation of these funds through through the plan, et cetera. 
uh, in the budget process. Um, do want to clarify the deadline uh, is June 30th and not July 30th. Just seeing that note here from staff members. So make sure that um, we're, we're being clear with folks on that. Um, if there are no other yeah. questions or comments, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Chairman. We have pushed the deadline to July 30th. Oh, okay. First. Okay. Wonderful. So slight change. Note noted on on that uh, strike strike my comment from the record, um, and uh, let everyone know who's, who's seen the, um, the the director's report that change is there. Um, so thank you, uh, Josette. I think that was you. I can't see you on screen, um, but um, appreciate you correcting me there. So um, if there's no other questions or comments, um, entertain a, a motion to approve these. A moot. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you again, Talia, Josette, and, and the entire team for all your work um, on this. It's great. Thank you so much. Um, last week of the disclosure agenda, um, I have received a request from staff to pull item 3A uh, from the agenda to be considered at a, a later board meeting. Um, so with that, I'd, I'd entertain a motion to approve the disclosure agenda in its entirety, except for item 3A. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Um, lastly, I, I just we have some breaking news. I guess the 2023 fair awards um, have been announced. Um, staff still going through to see how many of them uh, we received. We know at least from a preliminary review that we've received over two million dollars um, of awards for projects within the city. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, as, as we learn more, I'm sure we'll do an announcement later to let folks know about all the projects um, within the city specifically that received awards. Um, so thank you, Representative Inamorato, um, to, for to you, the entire delegation for um, you know your advocacy on behalf of those projects, uh, Director Weissman and her team at PHFA. Um, I know there's to, to the budget uh, talks that you referenced earlier, Representative Inamorato, there's discussion on raising uh, or eliminating the, the cap for fair. So um, just put a plug in for that to, to note the importance of those dollars to helping us um, you know, move projects forward, uh, even with additional resources that we're putting forth or entertaining putting forth with the city. Those, those dollars are critically important to making sure that we can uh, address the need for our residents and, and our neighborhoods. So um, thank you for that. Uh, unless there are any other comments from, from board members, um, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. We are adjourned. So thank you all. Uh, we'll see you next month. Take care.